five. So we're going to call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum. Um, first item is public comment. Chair requests there be no public comment on issues for which a prior public hearing has been held before the Board of Directors. Please note the public will have an opportunity to speak on specific items regarding the Metro Vision Plan between the staff presentation and the committee discussion. Is there anybody that would like to address the MVIC Board this evening? Seeing nobody. Item three in attachment A is the summary of the November 4 meeting. No reason for a vote, just a question if there's any modifications, changes, deletions, additions. Seeing no one, we will assume that they are good. So action items. The first action item is agenda item four, recommendation to the RTC uh, on the selection protocol. This was an item that we talked about at the last meeting, but we did not really give direction to staff. So we are going to uh, make sure that we give them clear direction after a quick briefing by Mr. Cottrell. Well, that summed it up pretty well. Um, okay. I, I was just, you know, going to reiterate a couple months ago, back in October, we brought two items for the 1621 tip. Um, the first item was the waiting list. The second item was a, a protocol to implement that waiting list if funding does become available. So there was discussion back in October, um, and there was actually action to adopt the revised waiting list, and that is contained within attachment one. Um, so we further reviewed the action that was taken, and staff noticed that there was no action pertaining to the actual protocol. So that is what we're bringing back, and that's contained within attachment two. Um, so. Uh, we're looking for action uh, this afternoon um, to recommend the protocol to the Regional Transportation Commission and the board um, for the 1621 tip as shown in attachment two. It, it's, uh, it's actually attachment C, or B, excuse me, attachment B. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I see what you're saying. Yep. I see what you're saying. Ah, you're right. Attachment two. I apologize. Everybody find it. Yeah. 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 Uh, Council Member Stolzman. I thought the staff presentation on this last time was very good, so just to stimulate discussion, I move to recommend the Regional Transportation Committee and the Dr. Cog Board waiting list protocol for the 2016 to 2021 Transportation Improvement Program as shown in Attachment 2. Have a motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Abstentions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Agenda item five is, as you recall, um, out of the 16 items, one of the items that we asked to be pulled out for further discussion at a later date was item number seven. So that's what this is, is this is the further discussion for outcome seven, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Calvert. Sure. So uh, quickly, uh, a quick presentation to kind of orient you, though, the chair did a little bit of, of this as well. So as, as the chair mentioned, uh, you have slogged through uh, 16 draft outcomes associated with the draft uh, Metro Vision Plan. Of those 16, uh, there was one outcome, outcome four, which if you recall was about freestanding communities that you said probably should not be included in the draft um, that goes to the board. Um, the other uh, 15 you spent some time on. Um, but outcome seven, uh, which is one of three outcomes really kind of related to transportation, um, in many ways I think you rightly noted there was some overlap with 
that outcome and other other um, descriptions or objectives uh, within the draft plan that you really wanted to kind of get through your review and circle back and kind of ask yourselves as a group the question of do we really feel like outcome seven um, as drafted is still needed or do we really feel like um, it's covered um, elsewhere? And so we have now gotten to the point where you've done enough work that it's probably time to, to have um, that conversation. So the attachment that's, that's associated with this agenda item, uh, one of the things that staff did is we went through and looked at every single objective associated with the draft outcome seven and just looked at the remaining portions of the plan and asked ourselves, do we really feel like this is actually covered elsewhere? Is there some duplication that's happening? Um, you know, is it, is it something that, that really is kind of covered uh, elsewhere in the plan? And our review, we kind of landed on, yeah, pretty much everything is covered. Uh, there are three objectives associated with outcome seven that, that to me felt unique um, to um, outcome seven and maybe weren't covered um, elsewhere. So that really is what that um, attachment's about. Just and you know, obviously, the staff's perspective on this, you may sort of read um, the objective um, in the left-hand column and and kind of the the comparable piece um, on the right in the middle column and say these don't feel the same to you. But we 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 did take a stab um, at that. So. Really kind of the options for your discussion this afternoon are, you know, do you want to keep outcome seven and the associated objectives? Um, if, if that is your sort of path, then really kind of what we, we would need to do is just to circle back like we've done with all the other outcomes and have a discussion about the, out, the sort of base outcome language as well as the associated narrative. Um, and then we would actually review the objectives at a later date because you really haven't taken a close look at um, any objectives associated with the draft um, plan. Um, and then sort of the other course of action, and there are probably some others as well, but these are the two main ones, uh, would be to remove, make a recommendation to remove outcome seven from the current draft and then, you know, provide guidance. If you, kind of, if you agree that these objectives are covered elsewhere, do you kind of agree with our assessment? And then I would ask that maybe the three that we have flagged as, as maybe unique and new, um, you know, give us some direction of are these even worth carrying over into the, into the draft somewhere else? Um, or could they, you know, or are you cool with them being moved? And ultimately, these would all be discussed at a later meeting, meeting as we will do um, with all the objectives, which again, really haven't spent a whole lot of time on. But, you know, one of the things that this that Invic has talked about as you've discussed outcomes is not losing the stuff that kind of hangs underneath it. If you really feel like it's important, don't get rid of the outcome and everything else that follows underneath it. So we do want to give you that opportunity to tell us um, are these things that you want to make sure and, and circle back to um, at a later date. That's it for the kind of the setup. Mayor Atchison. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. In, in regards to the, uh, the proposal from the staff, I, I think, it, at least in my mind, that what we were trying to do was basically find out if there was an overlap of seven, which you have provided, there is a lot of duplication because some of us covered in multiple places. And then looking at the three objectives that you think that still might be outstanding, uh, what I would like to recommend is that uh, that MVIC go ahead and recommend as a motion to remove objective seven, since it is a duplicate, and request staff to review objectives, the three objectives that they identified in the staff memorandum as to where they might best fit and come back with a recommendation at, at a later date. So that is my motion. So I have a motion to second. I have a motion and a second. I just want to clarify that it is removing objective seven right. but with objective seven point three a c and f staff coming back with a recommendation of where those should actually be that's correct commissioner jones i have a question for staff on how you intend to approach objective duplication throughout the document um, my concern here is is losing any overarching outcome that helps things hang together and that's the reason that I had liked um, keeping this overarching outcome because I think it explains how it all fits together and that that might be helpful to the reader, particularly if the reader isn't somebody that has spent hours looking at it around the Dr. Cobb table. But, so, but we do have the problem of redundancy of objectives. And I'm just wondering how, what is the plan for removing redundancy throughout the documents and objectives or do you think this is the only place that that exists because I feel like we should have a cons consistent plan and apply that throughout uh, I, I promise you this is not the only place where this exists um, and that that has been the struggle of putting together a draft document and, and uh, the commissioner described it just right as thinking of this from a readability standpoint 
section by section ultimately lead to that duplication, which makes it a problem for the whole document, right? That, that, that's the thing that we struggle with. So we've, we put some initial thought into this that when the objectives come to you, we will present them in, in a way that we will show you where we feel that there is some duplication and, and kind of, you know, maybe give you a hint as to where maybe some things could be dropped because they're covered elsewhere. But we really would want that to be your decision, ultimately your uh, recommendation of the board. And then, you know, I think we're at the point now where, and maybe it doesn't feel that way, but you have a pretty good sense of the whole of the document. And I think you're, when we start to have conversations about objectives, you will have a good feel as to the things that, that are duplication, du, you know, duplications that can be lost or duplications that should remain for that cohesiveness by kind of topic area. So we anticipate that when we come back to you, we will, we will have a set of recommendations about how those objectives should, should carry forward and at, at least flag for you where we think there's some duplication and really kind of get your guidance of things that should live because they really do help tell a better story. And in terms of, if I may follow up, please, staffs, view on this in terms of telling the story not from the eyes of electeds but from the eyes of other readers uh, what is your belief on number seven and whether or not it helps tell the story to leave it in or is it better i mean because i think we're on a spectrum of terms of making it the shortest document possible and making it the most readable and uh, what's the staff opinion sure. on our, our, our perspective has been that the duplication is, that we could live with it um simply because I think that it's a very rare person that is going to pick this document and start from the first word and read it till the last word. They are simply going to be people that are looking for their issue or set of issues and try to stitch it together that way. And so that's why the duplication has always been for something that we were willing to live with because of that. I, I just don't anticipate many people taking the time to, to read the whole thing. Mayor Atchison. Uh, just Going back to the agenda, I just want to make sure that we didn't forget that uh, we would open this up for public comment based upon what's on the agenda item. It's a very good point. Mayor Pro Tem Mullay. Uh, I just wanted to ask staff, uh, going back to, to uh, the mayor's motion, trying to decide where we should put these, you did list potentially moving them to, and was that staff's recommendation? Yeah. I mean, to so, so based on our initial read, this is kind of where it made sense. But you know, we can take a closer look. You know, we were the main thing that we wanted to ask you is, do those three objectives as they as they are written today, do they feel like something that you would want to have a discussion about later? If the answer to that is no, then we'll go ahead and take them out. If, if oh. the answer is yes, then that is sort of the hint as to where we would probably place them. Okay, I, you, that wasn't your recommendation that that objective seven point three because I'm fine with actually where you suggested okay. that they go, but given the caveat that we'll be discussing all the objectives, right? So if, if you, but you want to look at it again, I guess was my question to staff. Did you already give us the recommendation of where you think they yeah, should go? Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Okay, so, so I, I would suggest a friendly amendment that we move them to the spot that you already recommended if, if, the, if the mayor's open to it. It was your motion, Mayor Atchison. If you have a dollar, I'll buy that. Yes, it's fine. And you were the seconder? Okay. You were the seconder. Okay. Okay. They look alike. So just to Mayor follow up, then you'll you'll come back to us with all of the objectives, and we will be running through all of them. We'll correct. And, and, and you don't need to come back to us. With this correct. Again. And the three that are here, you, you know, this is this is the land spot that you'll see it when they come back. Mr. Teal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'll see in favor of the motion. I think it's a good idea. You know, I realize we're trying to tell the story. We're trying to tell the narrative to uh, our residents who had actually picked us up. But let's not forget, you know, under the, the concept we adopted under the balanced scorecard, these objectives also inform us as to our actions. And so, you know, uh, the outcomes inform us as to our actions, both uh, here as a board, uh, obviously as Dr. Cog, but then also informing us as participating municipalities and counties within the region. So I, I think it's great. I think it's a, a great job, uh, Brad, on kind of, you know, uh, sifting through this one. So I speak in support of the motion. I started to say council member, Mayor Jones. Um, I know that I haven't been coming to all the MVIC and Tim Plass has been, um, so I know I'm a little late to the discussion. I guess I think this objective the o is a great overarching theme that ties things together. And I think it's kind of one of 
the things that, as a metropolitan planning organization, we work on is, it, is tying together transportation and quality of life. So I guess, with all due respect to all the work you guys have done, I guess I am a little baffled why we would take it out and piece it, g divide all the pieces among other things. I think it's actually a wonderful umbrella that is kind of part of key to our mission. So I guess um, if we do end up getting rid of it, I, I agree we should definitely not lose those key um, aspects like tra transportation, demand management, stuff like that. I think that's very important. But all things being equal, I would keep it because I think it's a great organizing concept and is kind of one of our core principles. And it, to me, is a useful uh, way to organize the, our thoughts around the value of transportation. Okay, as, as uh, Mayor Atchison pointed out, I did um, neglect to open it for public comment. So if there is anybody that would like to talk to this point, you're welcome to come to the podium now. And I saw Mr. Stiegel anxiously trying to get to the podium, so. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can, can you use the mic, please? Yes, please. Um, let me talk about that one. I've seen this one, and, I, and what Suzanne is saying is right. It's a core piece, but let me ask you to think about something. I actually ran across quality of life in a site. There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes to quality of life. I wouldn't suggest losing it. I would suggest moving it to the highest element of your strategy because there's so many components outside of transportation, how, whatever it is, that affect quality of life. But if you look at our strategy map, our super objective for Dr. Cog is that at the very top is enhanced protectly of life because there's so many factors that feed into it. So I think if you were to maybe take this outcome and reframe it a little bit back to a transportation kind of outcome, that could work. But I see some that we have, safe, reliable, well-maintained or something. But I think that could be a little bit of a, uh, maybe a, a way to kind of deal with this back half of that outcome and move it to the top of your strategy because it culminates. Does that make sense to you guys? It's the ultimate thing we're shooting for. So just be a recommendation to consider. So we currently have a motion and a second with a friendly amendment that's been accepted. Further discussion? Mr. Graves. Can you read it again, Mr. Chairman? I'm sorry? Read the full motion in a minute, please. Uh, the motion is that we take the staff recommendation both on elimination of seven as its overall and changing or moving objective 7.3 A, C, and F to outcome 6, 15, and 8. Council Member Shakti. Um, do you have any comment on moving the objective to a broader overarching uh, I would say in some ways that's that's sort of how it sits now in some ways I mean that that's you know I think the memo kind of spells it out the reason you know like to Elise's question earlier I think all the we we clearly recognize that there were some duplication here but when we were, we were thinking about the role of transportation and our role as Dr. Cog um, it really felt like it could stand on its own despite the duplication. If you think about the three outcomes that are really kind of transportation related, one is about the actual stuff, like building, building world-class transportation infrastructure, and then there is an outcome that's about, okay, now that you got the stuff, you better maintain it and take care of it so that it continues to serve the people that you build it for. And then the third was rolling it up to understanding that, that together those things really are important to our region and to quality of life. So that's why, despite the fact there were objectives there that clearly, I mean, I didn't do a count, but let's say 17 out of 20 also live somewhere else, it made sense to highlight. So that, that's why it came to you the way that it did. But I also understand that if you really are looking to skinny it down and avoid duplication, then dropping it all together and integrating it maybe more so is, is certainly a, a, a reasonable action. Commissioner Jones. Well, I guess I, 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 the more we think about this, the more I'm concerned about making sure that this document educates the folks in the region about the regional vision of how these things are all connected. And I think, I mean, I think even our federal transportation laws guide us towards 
drawing the links between what we do in transportation and how they they work to support our air quality goals and our land use goals and so I think it's pretty important that this vision ties together for people and helps them understand how they're linked together and I'm wondering if the the there isn't a logistical answer to sort of duplication it certainly make if, if this were an electronic document we would link have links to objectives and, and and so that you might be able to find the link to a particular objective in two different places in the document because that objective gets you towards multiple goals. I don't know what the corollary is in a written document, but I think we should think through this is not going to be the only time this comes up. So think through how we can um, show that D that different objectives achieve, uh, work towards different goals throughout this document in an inefficient way. The document isn't super long, but really helps show the connections. So I guess I, I think that's pretty important. So I'm not in favor of this motion to get rid of the, the overarching objective. I think we should keep it in there and then figure out logistically how to deal with objectives that meet multiple goals. Mr. Graves. I just want to state that I agree with Commissioner Jones. Mayor Pro Tem Malay. And I guess my concern is the fact that the reason this document isn't read from one cover to the next is because it's a lengthy, wordy, duplicitous document, and I would actually like it to be a functioning document that residents can take out and read and that new board members can take out and read and it makes sense to them. Because I would say the prior documents haven't made sense and and they are they don't tell a story they're they're and I would like this document to tell a story I would like it to be something that is read from cover to cover and that people do understand that that it is our vision so that's why I am in favor of it and I would be in favor of removing a lot of the duplication in the document council member shock what if um there was some shorthand where where there was duplication it said See objective blah blah on page blah blah. Jackie. <laughs> we can't talk across the table. That's that's outside of the room. Look, look, I, I don't I don't have a problem with potentially putting some kind of an index in the back that has this, but I don't like I want it to be an efficient document that people read and can understand it. And, and in the back, if you want to do a cross-reference, I wouldn't object to that at the end of it. But within the document, see objective such. It drives me crazy when I've got to go back and forth on an electronic thing. I, I like to see it laid out in front of me and it tell me the story without me having to flip back and forth to anything else. So I think our in interest of transparency for our residents as well, I mean, it, it, gobbledygook. I mean, who wants to read our federal budget? Who wants to do any of that? Because it's an it's, it's a unwieldy document, and I don't want this to be that. I, I Council Member Teal, and then I'll come back. Yeah, I guess, I mean, uh, just again, speaking in favor of the motion, I mean, just, uh, I, I'd like us to think, of, you know, trust the process of the balance scorecard. The process of balance scorecard gives us that, you know, straight line sight from our top objectives all the way down, you know, from our mission statement all the way down to when we are actually executing. And I get it. I, I totally understand the idea behind a, you know, an electronic document that could bebop and show how everything hangs together. But please think about sketching that out. Envision, if you will, what that would look like, actually sketch that out on a piece of paper. If we trust the balanced scorecard, concept which we've adopted you know that gives us a straight line from the top all the way through if we insist on these little side notes to tie one end to the other how do you follow that that's a maze that you just can't follow as a layman who's trying to understand what the regional government is doing so again you know I mean I, I completely understand I think everyone is certainly um, making valid points here but let's go back to the process we've adopted Let's go back to the concept that we've adopted. And uh, this motion is in keeping with that balanced scorecard concept. Councilmember Shakti. Um, so I read the document when I was first, and it was long and it was repetitive. Um, and I, I feel like the, the so having the, the framework 
where we uh, listing um, if something is being repeated saying see this page I feel like would have worked for me because once you've seen something a couple times you're like okay I get it it's got to be walkable uh -huh. and so then you can I mean you can skim more easily it's shorter and if you really care about the substance of that sentence you can go back to it again but you already read it once if you're really reading it from cover to cover so I mean I, I see both perspectives but that's my Councilmember Stoltzman. Yeah, I really appreciate everyone's perspective today. I, I can understand wanting it to be concise and not repetitive, and I can understand wanting to see things, um, how they tie together air quality and you know, transit and multimodal and all these different things do tie together. So perhaps uh, over the course of the next several months, the staff could make some kind of infographic that could show us how some of these things do tie together so that you can see something um, visualized. And that perhaps could eliminate a lot of words, but just create one kind of graphic that shows the web and the network of things. And we could have the specific objectives and themes listed out independently. Thanks. Commissioner Partridge. I think when we think what we get uh, directed staff and Brad to do is really look at this, bring it back concise. And I think he's done a wonderful job when you look at it with, in, in um, outcome seven, we have 18 different objectives listed there now and 15 of those 18 are, are considered redundant so when you look at only three not being redundant I think it only makes sense it's a numbers game to me I'm half engineer so I look at it yeah three doesn't warrant a whole outcome itself Mayor Rakowski call the question is there a second? second all those in favor of calling the question please raise your hand that is more than two-thirds. So we'll call the question on the motion as amended and the second. Is there anybody who would like me to repeat the motion? Seeing nobody. Uh, with the discussion, rather than um, a voice vote, I'd like a hand vote. So all those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Agenda item six, which is the overarching themes and outcomes as amended. Mr. Calvert. So second item that's kind of a cleanup item. So uh, as, I, as I mentioned, you, you have spent a lot of time talking about both outcomes and outcome narratives. So if you remember last month, uh, you actually went through, I, I think, 12 or so um, narratives associated with outcomes and said, okay, we're good with this, you made your, your major changes and, and recommended them to the board. Uh, there were three that you started to talk about and you realized you needed pretty significant cleanup and asked staff uh, to, to do that. And so that's for outcome 12, 13, and 16. Uh, so we sort of do what we've been doing in previous months and I will bring up uh, the, the language that staff has drafted for, for you to discuss and then so, and then Part B of this, this item is the other thing that happened uh, last month that you may recall is towards the beginning of the meeting you started to talk about the importance of the definitions that you have been, um, that have appeared in, in this attachment for the past few months and how important it was for when your recommendation went to the board that there, everyone sort of on the same page that these were what we were thinking the terms meant and so that you wanted to revisit um, the definitions just to make sure everybody was okay with definitions as written and that we should maybe as staff a stab on making them consistent uh, to each other. We've, we've done that as well. Um, my inclination is to not talk about every single definition. Maybe just if there are ones that you want to talk about, uh, to talk about, but I'll of course defer to the, to the chair and, and to the uh, to committee to, to, to do that as to whether that's the right way or if you want to go um, kind of individually for each term um, that's defined uh, in this attachment. So with that, I, my suggestion is to start on um, outcome 12 narrative and work our way through and then revisit the definitions. I would like to recommend that as well. So rather than revisiting all of them, we're going to work on 12, 13, and 16 unless there's strong objection to that. Not seeing strong objection. We will start on the staff suggested uh, outcome 12 narrative.
So as you can see, this is the, it was revised for input consideration from our last meeting to this meeting. And you can see the narrative, the staff suggested the narrative there. I'll open it up for discussion. Seeing no discussion, is there a motion? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second to accept the staff's suggestion on the outcome 12 narrative. Discussion? Seeing none, we'll take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Very good. So we will do the same thing on 13. If I can turn my page the right way. So on 13, once again, there is the staff suggestion for outcome 13 narrative. Open it for discussion. Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion. Second. Uh, Sarah, yeah. Sarah moved it. I don't know who the second was. Elise, okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Discussion? Just one item, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mayor, Mayor Atchison. Can, can you use your, your mic, please? The uh, grammar in the, in the sentence, uh, just please address that because I'm not following the, the reading of it. Yeah. The first second sentence or yeah. second sentence? The first sentence, improved and expanded connection to health services, maintain and improve. There's either a hyphen in, in there, a comma, something, okay. because it just doesn't, it runs together too much. Yeah. And I would leave that to staff to, <laughs> to grammatically correct it. Okay. So other than uh, grammatical change that staff will address, the motion and the second around the floor, any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Abstentions. And we will move on to 15. Excuse me. 16. 16. We move the motion, Mr. Chair. We have a motion to accept the staff recommendation and a second by Mary Rakowski. Discussion. Seeing none, we will take a, a vote on uh, the staff suggestion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much. So as we now circle back to a conversation about definition, so you will see instances, and this is a good example, where you know we deleted the definition because th really what we heard from this group is let's, let's define terms of art, right, things that have a real potentially a unique meaning for this this document and this plan. So you'll you'll see some deletions where we didn't feel like it was a term of art. So th you'll see that, and that's that's why that that happened. And then most of the edits that you might see were simply to try to make the definitions as consistent in kind of the way that they're um, provided um, as possible. And since I asked the question before and didn't get any takers, I'm assuming there's not a reason to go back and revisit the ones other than 12, 13, and 16. Okay. Very good. We will move on then. Is there anything else on that item? Uh, uh, for 12, 13, and 16? Uh, just are there any defin defin definitions here that give people heartburn? Um, you know, the way that we are going to, so, so that everyone under, kind of understands what happens, um, we described this review process, that obviously MVIC was going to be the lead on reviewing the draft document, and that when the time was appropriate and had done enough work to bundle something to go to the board uh, with your recommendation, that that's what we would do. And so ultimately we will package uh, outcomes and outcome narratives that this group has recommended along with the definition so that the full board has an understanding of what the terms mean in case anyone needs that context that they will see and we will ask them to take action as to whether they uh, agree with the INVIC recommendation. When will you bring that forward, Brent? Uh, w in a normal month we would have done it in December, but we're obviously trying to have a light board agenda potentially in December, so it will most likely be January. Okay. 
Thank you. Is there anything on the proposed definitions that people would like to have further discussion on? Which one is it? Good. Okay. Okay, seeing none, then we will move on to agenda item seven. Jennifer? Every year we come to MVIC uh, to ask you to appoint uh, members and alternates to the Regional Transportation Commission. This is the group that um, is a compilation of DRCOG members, RTD members, CDOT members, and the business um, generally, uh, the business community or other special interests. Um, and so that's what this item is all about. The recommendations that, um, it, well, let me back up and say, the, um, uh, the RTC and the Dr. Cog Board on transportation decisions have to agree. And so uh, typically what happens is a transportation item like, um, for example, a recommendation uh, on what's in the, in the tip would be made by MVIC. Those members of, um, of MVIC that are on the RTC would then vote the way MVIC has directed them to vote when they get to RTC and then um, uh, hopefully in most cases RTC um, uh, and the Dr. Cog board agree on what's in the tip. So this is actually to appoint members of MVIC that sit on RTC. They will vote the way MVIC has directed them to vote on, um, uh, on items that come before RTC. We currently have um, uh, Robin Kanich and Ron Rakowski uh, from MVIC who sit on RTC. Robin has, uh, I haven't talked with Ron about this, but Robin has told me she has a strong desire to come off of RTC. She feels she's oversubscribed right now and would like to let someone else uh, take this on. And I believe that Mayor Rakowski and uh, Councilmember Stolzman have expressed an interest to be the representatives. Okay. Um, we also need um, alternates on those times where uh, Ashley or Ron um, couldn't, or whomever the members uh, are, uh, can't be here. The way the alternates work, if we find out that someone can't be at a meeting, we start with whoever is closest and start calling out um, so that we don't bring someone from Boulder all the way down here for what turns out to be a, a 45 minute meeting and the drive ends up taking, the total drive ends up taking longer than the actual meeting did. So we would call um, someone like Shakti before we would call someone like Elise or, or Suzanne just for convenience sake and to reduce traffic on the highway. <laughs> so um, I, I guess kind we handle this typically the I mean the, the same way we do um, things at the board or folks have uh, we have two people that yeah I was gonna say is there anybody that didn't have an opportunity to submit their name that also has an interest other than Mayor Rakowski and Council Member Solzman. Seen uh, Council Member Teal. Well, actually, I'm going to make a pitch for something else. I've been a um, an alternate for uh, the last year, really. I've only gotten a call a couple times. I was more than happy to make the about three hour investment of time uh, coming up from Castle Rock. So I'd be happy to uh, continue as an alternate if so chosen. How many do we need for? Let's let's do the uh, let's stick with the members first and just make sure there's nobody else. I don't see anybody jumping up and down. Point of clarification, Mr. Chairman, does the alternate have pinned to the jurisdiction that's represented on RTC? No. Oh. It's an it's an alternate for the committee. Thank you. So I'm not seeing anybody else jumping up and down. So um, can I have a motion to accept Councilmember Stolzman and Mayor Rakowski? Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? On the alternates, um, Council, Council Member, I'm sorry. Oh. On the alternates, Council Member Teal has already expressed an interest to stay, um, and we would prefer to have four alternates. I'm assuming that uh, Council Member Shakti and Mayor Atchison are still interested. Okay. I have no need to do it, but I also am happy to do it. I don't need, I mean, I was called once last year, so whatever. <laughs> Is there another member that might be interested? Mr. Graves. Since Councilmember Teal took three full hours last year, I'm happy to match that and submit my name. <laughs> You'll be called every time, yeah. <laughs> So we do have four. Is there anybody else that would like to throw their name in? We can have more if we need them. I mean, if you want to join, because Anthony's going to be called every time now. So. <laughs> By the way, 20 minutes notice. <laughs> so we have... Uh, so I, I'm going to just Council put in a Shark. little pitch that um, since... People aren't acting so extremely excited about this. When this came up last year, my staff said, this is important, you need to pay attention. <laughs> so, um. Not seeing anybody else volunteer of the four people. Uh, is everybody good to motion to accept them? Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Any, uh, are there any other matters for the good of the cause? That, and we will confirm our next meeting is January 6th, 2016. And at 447, we are adjourned.